Hello everyone and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. On today's video we have a little bit of an exploratory episode. I ended up with a piece of equipment that I don't know anything about, so I thought today would be fun to take a look at it. Sorry, my Google Home was just <laughs> thinking I was talking to it. Oh, sometimes that thing is so aggravating. You know, in the world of Star Trek, the computer never misunderstood the, the cast on the show, the crew. But in real life, this technology constantly is doing that. Anyhow, uh, like I was saying, yes, I was given a piece of equipment. I don't know anything about it. So I think on this video, we're going to take a look at it together. It's normally something I would just do on my own. I figured it might be fun to make a video out of it. So let me grab it. It's very big. I had to clear off all this space on the bench here. All right, here it is. Okay, make sure I don't hit anything. Um, <laughs> oh good, yeah, it's heavy. All right, so here it is. Um, I think this is a computer, but it may not be. Uh, it's got what looks like a power switch here, or actually that's a reset switch, isn't it? That's a power switch there. It's got a pilot light, so power LED, I guess. And uh, this is a momentary, so that's gonna be a reset switch. The whole thing looks kind of homemade, doesn't it? But it's in this pretty nice, well, I mean, it's beat up now, but it, it would have been a nice aluminum case. Rack mount, obviously, it's got these big ears here. And um, if we look at the side here, there are these um, notch things here. So obviously this had rails at some point. So this was actually in a rack. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, so let's, uh, let's keep looking at it. Move that over there on the floor. Let me try to turn this thing around without hurting myself because I'm still not in the best of shape when it comes to uh, heavy things. Although this thing is entirely aluminum, so it's actually not terribly heavy. It's just bulky. Um, it does have some feet on the bottom. <laughs> Sorry, this is terrible. What a terrible video. Oh, look at this thing. It's like ready to fall off the bench. Um, okay, so on the back of the thing, if I try to prop it up on my arm, big cooling fan, very dusty, power supply with, with a, an on-off switch. So I assume uh, this is like a master on-off and maybe whatever's on the front is not a power switch. I don't know. Ribbon cable connectors. Um, this looks like maybe 34 pin, uh, 50 pin. And then of course we have two DB25s, well three DB25s, um, two female and a male. And that's that's it. That's all that's on the back of this thing. Um, I don't know if you can see it. I don't think you can. Oh yeah, there's a foot there. So it's got pretty chunky feet on it. So if this thing was actually rack mounted or not, or not I don't know. But I'm gonna turn this again. And it looks like there are some screw things on the top. So we can take the top cover off. Now, if you recognize what this is, um, <laughs> uh, let me know. Oh, okay, so these are, I thought they were screws. They're actually kind of half turn, like Ikea furniture stuff. If you've ever made Ikea things, I think you turn it one way for unlocked. Okay, that's it, <laughs> it's unlocked. It's got little um, green dots here, here and here, which obviously is the locked position. This is completely aluminum, al aluminum that is. It's very, very light. And okay, <laughs> oh boy. All right, well, um, is this thing homemade? Is this like some kind of S100 bus machine? Now, right off the bat, okay, so there's extra cards floating around in here. Um, I can see there's cards in here like this one that I'm taking out that this is just purely uh, a riser card. And this would be for working on the cards outside of the chassis, like raised up so you could troubleshoot them. The only thing I see here is made in USA. And then we have all the traces. And for whatever reason, they used like um, solder wick, it looks like almost for the ground lead. And uh, same on this side here. And we have A through R and then S through EE -E for the pin numbers, so to speak. So, okay, um, that's a riser card. There's another riser card in here. This one doesn't have the ground lead <laughs> solder mask reinforcement. 
Otherwise, it is the same. Looks like there's another one here. Um, ooh, this one's got gold, but it looks like a, a trace got damaged there, so someone repaired it. At some point, we have a card that's just sort of lying in here. Um, although this one has, I guess this is, these are sockets here? Maybe for RAM? They're definitely sockets. These are actually, it's an interesting thing. I, I, I you know, I don't know, I don't, I don't know where you can buy these anymore. Basically, you have a slightly bigger hole on the PCB and you put these little sockets in there. Now, it doesn't look like a normal socket, does it? But these are actually, the sockets are on the other side. You notice how the pins are kind of bigger? You can actually push the chip into that. All right, so right here we have a Z80 CPU from Moss Tech. Uh, is there a date? 8147 is the date on there. And these ICs here, 83, 83, 84? Like what? This is so new. That one's 78. Uh, there's a button on the top here, which is almost certainly a reset button. I don't know what, what could these pins be other than RAM, but I'm not sure. And something obviously connects to the top there, or like ribbon cables to another card or something. So we have a CPU card that was just loose in the machine. Um, what's this? 74HC373, see if it's C373, see if there's three of those. Spare parts, obviously. Uh, and we have a 7427 and a 7427. So spare ICs, just loose on the inside of the machine. Over here, there's also some more ICs. CPM boot, <laughs> boot ROM, 24th of November, 1986. And um, that's a 2708. I can't even read 2708s because to read a 2708, you need five volts, I think minus five and plus 12. So you need some extra BIOS voltages. And then writing them as well. I don't have any device that can actually write them. Oh, well, actually, I stand corrected. The Retro Chip Tester Pro, I think, can read these out and potentially write them with the, the right board. I'm not sure I have the right board. All right, so we have the power supply. It's kind of scary. Uh, it's got a huge transformer here from Tektronix. Look at that. See that? Date code, 78. <laughs> and then the leads come out of that and they go on this board and almost certainly there's like large um, linear regulators on the back, I assume. There's a couple that are on the side down here touching this uh, heat sink. Those are probably the other rails. Let's see what that one says. LM uh, 34 something something. Okay, I can't quite read that one. Yeah, can't quite read that one either. Now, the wild thing is like, there's so much space in this case that it would be pretty easy just to put a regular PC power supply in here. Um, it probably has enough current capacity to drive all these cards. So I'm not sure about keeping this. It's a little scary because uh, I wouldn't say it looks homemade, but definitely got some modifications done to it here that don't look like original, like whoever made this originally, but it's quite beefy, big connections here. There are obviously giant capacitors underneath here, um, filter caps. So yeah, <laughs> anyways, there we go. Um, bridge rectifier, I guess it's that right there. I'm assuming there's regulators. Oh, there's some more on this side as well. Okay. All right, um, we got extra ports or, or you know extra connectors here with wires that are loose. This doesn't actually, that doesn't actually appear to be connected to anything. So we'll just take that out. There's a toggle switch right here. Is that connected to something? Look how thick these wires are. Don't even know what those go to. All right, so let's keep going here. Let me see if I can get these cards out. There aren't those little tabs you can bend over to pull cards out. This one here has a bunch of ROMs on it. So let me see if I can get this out. You know, this is not easy. There we go. Okay. So this card here has got a big crystal oscillator on it. We have an Intersil IM64021. Another MOSTEC chip here. 
MK9004N ASSB assembled in Malaysia from 1976. This is 79. This thing is definitely a hodgepodge of different era parts. Has the same marking here, E5839X. Same or similar as these other cards here. Let's see if this one has that as well. Yeah. E6574XB. E5839. Okay, so similar but different. <laughs> uh, we have a Motorola MC1441i from 1977. Some Motorola parts here, 74C107. I mean, I don't even know. Some CD chips, that's a CD4023. I have no clue what this board does. And obviously these pins have been bent over. Looks like they were manually bent over, but obviously cards were connected or cables were connected to this at one point. You see these crazy bodges, look at this. Leg legs are lifted. Wire runs over here. Why wouldn't that be done on the back? Okay, there's bodges here as well. I mean, this wire here, that looks like it's um, transformer wire or something. And I don't know. Uh, we got <laughs> some bypass caps. So I'm gonna, gonna guess that this is an S100 bus computer, which is like the Altair era of things. There's a lot of card slots in here. Um, I'm gonna have to go look at pictures of S100 cards because to be honest, I've never seen any in person. I don't know if they're to the physical dimensions of these or what, but um, here we are with a ROM board, 1979. And so this one right here is zero to three FF, it says there. And this one is 407 FF. So 2708 are, what is that? Eight kilobits each. So. Um, uh, this one says 3,000. Oh, that's a 2764. Wow, in a white ceramic package. Never even seen that. Uh, this one here is says prom address 2000, and it's a 2708. That says it's a 2708 under there. So why would someone write 2764 there? Anyhow, lots of uh, sockets. Check out this. <laughs> it's like must be address decoding or something here. <laughs> it's like. Okay, how you doing? Oh, <laughs> the back, it's like completely, wow. This is when computers were, you know, not made to just be bought by a consumer and brought home and just work. You kind of had to figure it all out for yourself and make these kinds of mods. So judging by the fact this is a LS139 and I'm not sure what these are. I assume this is like some address decoding thing going on. It's mostly these that are modified. And a Motorola MC145, I'm sorry, 14515B from 1977. I mean, these are all chips that are of a different series. They're not like 74LS logic. So I don't really know them. I'm not very familiar with them. Uh, there's a 244, so that's a buffer, 1977. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> this thing is is quite wild. Um, what is this? Voltage regulator here, 7905. So that's a minus five volt regulator right there. I wouldn't be surprised if this power supply in here gives minus 12 volts to the entire system here. And that um, the cards that need other rails, like minus five, will do it locally like this. So there's looks like a RAM card right here. I bet you that's gonna have those on it as well. All right, let's let's uh, let's keep moving here. Um, okay, that goes to something and it wasn't connected. So, oh, let's see here. What's the trick to get these out? How about I get this one out here? Oh man, these are in really tight. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is an EEPROM programmer. E6632XA, made in USA. Um, that went to something, connections to another board, but the fact that this has got the ZIF socket on here really makes me think that this is some kind of an EEPROM programmer. 
Voltage regulation going on here. Uh, another 7905, so minus five volts right there. Yeah, something, something's happening on here. And uh, I kind of wish that there were things that said what they were, like someone just wrote on it with a marker. But I guess if this was someone's computer that they made themselves, they never thought someone else would be looking at it, right? <laughs> Let's look at this car that the EEPROM programmer, what I think the EEPROM programmer is, connects to. All right. Uh, 3852 PC and the notch is on that side. And this has the notch over on that side, 3854 PC as well. I don't even know what these are. Mostech MK3850. And this one uh, is a Mostech MK90071P, it looks like. <laughs> and then obviously some support logic here. Uh, there's a button right there. And then we have the cables that run over to this board. Oh, wait, check this out. There's an LED right here. And underneath it, it says programming. Isn't that nice? Oh, look, address lines, data lines. Okay, so yes, definitely this EEPROM programmer. Wow, fascinating. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep going here. One more card on this side, and this is a RAM board. There we go. Okay, well, um, yep, lots of RAM here. Um, this will be, wow, um, these are TMS 4051s. I think these are 8K. So as opposed to 4416s, which are really common for 16K, I'm pretty sure eight of these is 8K. And there's a 7905 there for the minus five volt rail. My um, plus 12 is probably already provided on the back plane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I guess that means 24K of RAM. Not a lot. Uh, there's room for an additional eight ships here. So I guess you could bring it up to um, a total of 32K. Made in the USA. So this says E5464X. So a RAM board. On the back is, <laughs> we got diodes, we got resistors, we got bodge wires. Um, there's an extra connector here that, uh, I guess that's supposed to be there. Who knows what that goes to? And there's one up here as well. And it looks like uh, these two things have been reworked. There's some flux there, but they're sockets. So not quite sure why, <laughs> but 8K um, RAM chips. Yep, first time I've run into that myself personally. All right, next up. Here is a proto board. Someone has made this by hand. All right. Uh, we have a Z280 MPU. I assume that's a math coprocessor for the Z80. I've never heard of one or seen one. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow is right. Wow, it's incredible. It's not just wire wrap. This is this is like the it's like an enamel coating on side on top of copper wire and it's all been made by hand. That's just wild. Wild wild. A delay line here. All various support logic chips here. What do we got here? 373s. Those are some of those extra chips that were on that little foam pad I found. Yeah, I'm um, quite impressed. Like, look at this. They, they, they ran this, I don't know if it's ground or five volts or something all the way around the board here. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Just amazing. Just amazing. And look, we have another one of these homemade cards right here. Oh, this one hardly has anything on it. Looks like it's got a flash memory chip here and uh, 74F540, so this is from 1986. This, this machine was used. This was used into the 80s. Uh, we have a Sony CXK58-1000P-12. I'm pretty sure this is an SRAM chip. So this is, wow, look at that. Look at that. 
So I, I take it this is just some select logic, like rudimentary select logic for address lines. And this is like an extra RAM expansion card. You just need two chips, something to select it when the machine is accessing those um, that m memory space using the address lines. That's all it really takes. So next card, this goes to one of the ribbon cables there. This card is also homemade. It is a dense card. We have an Intersil IM64021PL. And then we have some extra ICs here. Now, what I haven't seen right off the bat is like, I don't know if there's um, a CRT controller in here. Like, does this thing have a keyboard connection? Does it have a monitor connection? I didn't get cables with this thing. I didn't get a keyboard with it. So I don't really know. Um, how you actually interface with this thing. Uh, yes, uh, this is on a perf board and look at the back. It's kind of a thing of beauty actually. Look at this corrosion right here though. I wonder what caused all that. Like, don't think, oh, oh, this is a battery here. All right, okay. It says uh, Saft America Incorporated. It's, it looks like it's an ICAD. So this is obviously, oh yeah, it's a clock. 32.768 kilohertz. And this I see right here, MM58167AN. I think that's a clock chip. So this is a clock board and wow, the leakage. Oh man. And I don't, I guess I need to look up what these other chips are here. Like it's a parallel or maybe a serial port or something like that. So I'm gonna leave that connected. Um, just right there, because I don't know what those connections are. Next one up, I can see this board has a bunch of uh, Z80 chips on it, like the other chips that go with the Z80. So this is like the other half of the computer of the main system that is. Um, we got the Z80 PIO, programmable interrupt, or I'm sorry, <laughs> the IO chip, an SIO, or oh, sorry, PIO, ser parallel IO, SIO, serial IO, uh, CTC, that's, um, I don't know, clock timer, not clock, it's like a, a, a timer chip or something. I don't, it's not a clock itself, I don't think. Not like a real-time clock, but it's a, you know, you can set up timers and stuff. Um, this is homemade as well. Like, I just, this whole machine is just staggering, all these homemade boards. And it's obviously connected to all these connectors here that go to the, the panel there. Um, we're talking, there's probably like serial parallel happening here or like user port kind of things. I'm not sure if it's like a total RS-232 missing chip there, but it's all wired up, so don't know. Unless like maybe it had two serial IO chips originally and um, for two different serial ports and one of them got pillaged or maybe never populated or... So we'll put that there. Okay, next, uh, these two are connected together. I am pretty sure that these are the floppy controller. This 50 pin ribbon would be going to the disk drives. Now I did get the disk drives. I didn't get disks, but I got the disk drives, which is a shame because uh, all of these boards here would be totally custom. Uh, I'm gonna have to unplug this floppy cable here. Okay, there we go. Since these are joined together at the hip. So not homemade, but tons of mods. Wow. Lots more of those 373 chips that there were spares of. So I don't know if, uh... oh, it's got RAM on it as well. Uh, this actually has 64K. I think this is 64, HM4864A-12. So the floppy controller? Well, I mean, it's not the actual floppy controller, but 64K of RAM, so maybe this is the system memory. It's typical for a CPM machine to have 64K of RAM, and then the ROMs uh, get bank switched out. That's like not an unusual thing. So maybe this is the main RAM that goes with the processor and that those other boards were simply extra RAM for like bank switching out or something. And then it, of course, oh, look at the bodges on the back of that. It's got them. <laughs> it's got them. This is the floppy controller. Yeah, we have an NEC 765. That's a very common floppy controller chip. It's used on like the PC Junior and lots of PCs. It's like PC compatible for double density use. Um, 
Lots of logic, the connector, but most of all, it's a homemade board. <laughs> oh, that is just staggering. A homemade board. Um, all right, so clearly this is a Z80 machine that ran CPM. Uh, the disk drives that I got with it are eight inch disk drives. What I haven't figured out is where exactly is the video connector on this thing? Did it ever have a monitor or was it like completely terminal based? You know, it may have been entirely used on the terminal. It's possible that this, this right here, oh, corrosion is not good. Yeah, there really aren't a lot of pins connected to this big ribbon cable. And they head over to this intersil chip here. This is that, the 64021PL. I'm gonna do a quick search. Grab my phone here. No, it actually appears that the 6421PL is a UART, asynchronous receiver. So I guess that's serial. And you know, I didn't, I said there's not a lot of connections to this ribbon cable. Well, you don't need a lot uh, when you have serial. Okay, yeah, 2.4. Yeah, these crystals here, I think that, that give away that that's what that is. So then where's the display come from? This is RAM, pretty sure that's a RAM board. This here is the Mathco processor board. This is extra RAM right here. Uh, okay, so clearly this is, uh, this is obviously an EEPROM programmer here. This is not a display controller. Uh, this is a ROM board. There is no question about that. That's what that is. How about this board right here? This was stuck in there. Uh, okay, so another Intersil 64021PL. So that's another one of those serial controllers. Where is that wired up to? Looks like it. Yeah, I don't know. But then we have this MK90004. Let's do a quick search on that one. I mean, there's no RAM on this board. So unless this Motorola, that, that could be RAM there. So like <laughs> this chip here, the uh, MK4, uh, MK90004N exists, like there's a little bit of results, but I'm certainly not getting anything, anything else for it. 1976. Okay. Um, yeah, this IC here, this Motorola chip goes up to that, those, those pins there. MC14411, let me look that up. According to this, it's a bitrate generator for the Coco. Well, I mean, it's used on the color computer. Uh, bitrate generator. Bitrate generator is constructed with complementary MOS, okay, blah, 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 crystal oscillator. Applications include selectable frequency source for equipment and data communications, such as printers, CRT terminals, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I think that's something to do with like a stereo port, like it's a baud rate generator, basically. So this must be a serial card, I'm assuming. So we have yet another serial card. Uh, okay, we have this board. Oh yeah, this is the CPU board. We know that already with these mysterious sockets here. I just don't get what those could be for. Yeah, okay, so that's it. There aren't any more boards. Oh, um, yeah, no, there's the floppy controller board that I have sitting down here. And that's, that's actually all, all there is. I guess there's no video board on this machine. It's, it's just, uh, you must have had to use a, a, a terminal. So whoever had this machine, uh, they did it with a terminal. Uh, and this board here? No, it's definitely not this either. Definitely not. No, none of these are, this stuff is all completely unrelated to a monitor. Yep, and three boards for diagnosing the system. <laughs> I mean, there was stuff like this, like that plugged into something, and then I had a couple wires here. Looks like two, unless one broke off. Yeah, I think one broke off. And uh, actually, judging by the fact that it's pin two and three, is it? Yeah, that's serial. This has gotta be a serial port right here. So I'm assuming that's an extra serial port for like one of these extra boards, like um, this one here, 
Like maybe it was connected to right here or something like that. Very, very mysterious. So indeed, an interesting machine. Very much homemade. And I just got this and the disk drives with nothing else. No documentation, no schematics, no manuals, nothing. And the fact that so many of these look homemade, I don't think it would be possible for me to get this thing up and running again. Now, um, let's quickly look to see if this is S100 bus. If this is, then at least the voltages are right. I can give it the right voltages. But the problem is like, I don't have the boot disks and it looks like, you know, this thing has a disc controller, so it's gonna try to boot. Yeah, I don't know if enough those, those ROMs that are there like have enough bootstrap capability to output something out of the serial ports. I mean, it's just, it's a big unknown. <laughs> All right, well, definitely this machine is not S100 bus. S100 bus doesn't have a notch in the middle of the card there. The cards look bigger as well. Oh, look at this, I zoomed and I can't zoom out. Anyways, um, this is an Altair card there. It looks a lot larger uh, than these as well. So I don't know, I'd, I'm gonna rely on my viewers to tell me what they think these cards are. <laughs> what kind of machine is this? Like maybe if this is based off a clone of something else, then I can at least look that up and try to make heads or tails of it. But the fact is uh, without at least knowing what the pinout is on these, <laughs> like I don't even know, I don't even know where to start, so to speak. I don't even know where to start. As far as I'm aware, the majority of these, not homebrew, but you know, these early computers that people would buy were S100 based. That, whoever that came up with that standard was pretty much adopted, like the Altair had it, MSI, and other machines had that same bus connector on it. So the cards were somewhat interchangeable. So at least you have like standardized voltage rails, things like that. It's not like you could just take a, you know, one card from one machine and necessarily use it on another because of like the addressing and all that stuff. But, um, you know, there was some standardization going on there. This machine, on the other hand, you know, like with this stuff, I just don't know. So, yes, um, that's this fascinating machine. Um, I'm definitely not going to trash this machine, but it may be a project for a future time, <laughs> so to speak. Obviously, if I could figure out the power supply and the voltage rail, so if we could figure out what kind of connector this is, like what type of bus, so I can at least get this thing powered up with some rudimentary cards to see like those ROMs, if they even start to boot the Z80 CPU. And I can connect, um, you know, one of these cards here, I can connect logic probes to these bus connectors here. To, there's little posts on here, very easy for troubleshooting. You just clip right onto there. Uh, so yeah, indeed, if anyone recognizes what this might be, that would be incredibly helpful. And if you could find documentation or schematics or any other info exists, that would also be super helpful. Yeah, there we go. Um, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Patrons, I uh, really wanna thank them. Their names are scrolling up the side of the screen over here, I think. <laughs> Maybe it's this, time, this side. I kind of mix and match depending on the, my feeling. <laughs> And anyhow, uh, yeah, so thanks very much. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And, um, you know, if I get more info about this or one day if I'm totally daring in the future when I have nothing else to do, then maybe I'll bust this thing out and see what I can figure out. Who knows, right? So there we go. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.